So now in this video, we are going to take our entire character lineup and revisit them again. I want to make some minor adjustments to the outlines that I've created as well as the silhouette. Now let's revisit our dwarf character again. I'm just going to lower the opacity. Um, I'm looking at my face for my dwarf and I think that he's a little heavy right now in the upper area so I'm going to use the lasso tool and kind of reduce his face a little bit more. I think right now it makes a lot more sense. It looks a lot more cleaner and it didn't look as heavy as it did before. Now I'm just going to hide the outline for my dwarf and if you look at that area where I drew in his hair I realized that they kind of look like devil ears and it broke the silhouette a little bit so we are going to erase that and go back in and just rework the outline so that the hair doesn't look so pointy and gives this kind of sinister aspect to our character. It's, it's very interesting just adding those two angular lines or uh, it's very easy to kind of evoke that or communicate that kind of um, feeling. So let's get rid of it right away and we will rework the inside of our character again. I think instead of giving him uh, such pointed looking hair, I'm just going to give him like sideburns, nothing too intense. Now, while I like the way his mustache and beard is looking, again, I think there's a lot going on in our dwarf. Um, sometimes all these different shapes can kind of conflict with each other. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to make his beard a little more squarish. And the reason I'm making and using this shape is I think it's a nice contrast against my very rounded character. One of the things that I remember learning when I was in art school is straights against curves. This balance of this curvy with a straight line uh, can really bring a nice sense of harmony to your character. So think about those shapes when you're constructing within your design. Now I also want to start adding a little more information to his clothing and I'm adding these kind of straight-ish looking lines to break up that big space that was underneath his beard. And you know by doing this I've divided my silhouette into little shapes as well. So now it, you know, it really is all coming together and when you see it, it's like a whole bunch of different shapes kind of forming this one unified, pretty cool and harmonious design. So I'm just going to go ahead and really, really nitpick over here. I'm just cleaning up all the extra lines that are around my character and I'm really taking my time with it. You know, I'm, I'm paying attention to the silhouette. I'm adding thicker lines in certain places and thinner lines elsewhere. I'm thinking about the perspective. You know, I'm not really drawing the line for his boots completely straight. I'm adding a curve to them. So this kind of indicates where my horizontal line could be. Sorry, I mean my horizon line could be. I just want to move his left arm a little more forward. I think it's too much to the edge right now. I'm 
Now I'm going to create a duplicate of my character just dragging and dropping my design onto a new layer and I'm going to put it next to my lineup and I'm going to keep doing that as I edit because I want to make sure that they all look cohesive. This is very important especially when you have so many characters in the same world. So now that we've gone ahead and added some more variation to our dwarf, let's go ahead and do the same for our huntsman. I want to give him a lot more detail and really just divide up the shapes. In case there's too much overwhelming shape language, we want to start editing some of that out. And this is like the refining and editing process of your um, character design. Now it's going to be the same process as what I did for the dwarf. What I'm going to first start by doing again is just lowering the opacity of the outline and then on the silhouette layer notice that I have a lot more white space showing. I want to make sure that all of this is filled in because all of this will affect the shape language of my character. So I'm going to go ahead in there and erase out and fill in with my brush whatever information needs to be added back into the main grey silhouette shape. You know, now I'm really nitpicking over here. Of course, I, you know, want him to be kind of very straight. And if there are any angles on his body, I don't want to add too many of them. So I've gone ahead and really straightened that shape on his neck. And I'm going in there and filling out that shape of his beard and creating something that can really communicate who our character is. And again, I mean, I'm looking at my Snow White character to make sure that the style is the same and just, you know, playing with it and making sure that everything is working. Now, of course, I want to give him some very thick eyebrows and kind of some tired bags under his eyes. You know, he's a huntsman. I want him to look tired and like he's been out in the woods for a long time. He's a very serious character as well and dependable almost, the silent and dependable type. That's what I'm going for. Now again, you know, I'm just cleaning up this character, just like I did with the dwarf. There's a lot of very thick and heavy lines all over, and I want to clean that up. Um, you know, I'm going to make his arm a lot more straighter, and because if you look at his left arm, I added a slight curve to it. So this one, I'm going to emphasize that straightness to kind of balance out that slight curve on the other side. And again, look, I'm hiding constantly making sure that this shape is working, making sure that the silhouette still makes sense. Now, when I hide my outline, I really don't like that little shape that's sticking out from my silhouette where the axe is, so I'm going to get rid of that and just erase it. But I did like how it kind of broke up those very straight lines on the right, so what I'm going to do instead is, is I'm going to add his gloves and, you know, kind of draw them outside the silhouette a bit. And just by doing that, it's not, it's not a very big change, but it didn't make my character look so symmetrical on the right. So these are very little things that you can do, like really nitpicking at your character. Um, I'm adding in those very box-like shapes to the belt again and I was thinking I wanted to go in and revisit that sword or that knife that's kind of hanging on his belt on the right there. I see that big shape I have where that, you know, it's like a rectangle with a diagonal slant to it. I want to, I'm thinking maybe I'll add in that slight spider web feel to it and give it that shape. Um, it, it's, it'll make it a little more in interesting. Right now our character is very boxy 
and there's no intricate detail in there. Of course, we can add a lot more of that when we're in the color phase or the final stage of our character, but I, I want to see what it looks like right now. And, and, and I think I like that. I think adding in a very small detailed shape uh, makes our character a little more interesting. He was looking, he was looking a little boring, at, you know, right now. And I really don't like this very diagonal line that I've drawn here. It doesn't work with our character. I'm going to stick to adding those straight lines as I did before. I thought maybe it would make my character a little more interesting, but I, I don't think it works in this case. So let's just get rid of it. So I think I'm quite happy with my Huntsman right now. I have a lot of shape information in there that I'm very pleased with and I think that, you know, it makes a lot of sense and works well with my character. Uh, you know, I think his, his right leg is a little thin right now, so I'm just going to fix that so that, you know, it goes along with the entire shape of the character. And then let's move on to our final character, the Queen. I left her in a very rough stage in the previous video. Now we're going to go ahead and really refine her, just as I did with the dwarf and with the huntsman. She's of course going to be a little more complicated because there's so many different pointed shapes to her, but you know, we'll make it work. Now when I looked up at my lineup, I noticed that my Snow White character has a slightly wider face and bigger eyes, and the reason I had done this was I wanted her to seem a little younger. You know, the younger you are, the wider and bigger your eyes are. Uh, now in the case of my queen, I think we'll leave her eye shape to be the same, but I will make her head a little bigger, because right now um, it doesn't look stylized enough. When I look at the character on a whole, it's, uh, it's very simple. So we're going to elongate that shape of her head a little bit. Now I've hidden the outline so we can pay attention to the silhouette again. I really don't like the shape that her long hair that I drew earlier, uh, the way it looks. I don't think that shape is doing much for her silhouette. I think it kind of rounded her out a little. So we're actually going to get rid of the hair later on and create a much more angular shape and go back to that part of our character. I don't think it reads well enough right now. Just by looking at the silhouette of this, I realized that the anatomy doesn't really make sense either. Her arms are a little too long. Um, so we're going to fix all of that. Just by looking at the silhouette, I don't need the outline at this moment. Um, and as I had done with my Baba Yaga illustration that I showed you in the first video, I'm going to make sure that her fingers are very pointed. You know, wherever I can add in those extra angles, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to get rid of the hair uh, that I had drawn out in the outline because when I ended up looking in the silhouette, it just did not make sense to me. I was not happy with the silhouette and shape language on a whole. Our character just didn't look evil enough. And I also look at her crown and I think by adding in those swirls, although it makes sense, when I hid my outline, it just didn't make her silhouette look evil enough. So we're going to push all of these qualities even more. I don't think that they're working. Now, um, I really like the way a crown looks now. It really made it look much more crazier. And you know, just by adding that symmetry, I've created something a little off in our character. You know, if you looked at the Huntsman that I did earlier, I made it a point to make everything kind of even. Like if you had a big arm, I added a big arm next to it. But in this case, I want to really vary the shapes because our character, our evil characters especially, you can have the most fun with. And they're usually my favorite to draw because I can almost go wild with all the shapes. So what I'm really going to do is erase out that hair that I had and let's start adding in some more spikes to her shoulders. I think that this is already making our character look really cool. And, and as you can see, I'm just using the silhouette now. There's no 
drawing or outline for these decisions I'm making. I'm strictly going by visual information at this moment. So let's just add in those shoulder pads really quick and fill in some of that silhouette space as well. And I think that her left arm is a little too far away from her body, so I'm going to take that silhouette shape itself, like when I look at it right now, it does not make sense. So let's just use our lasso tool and move that entire arm a little bit closer. Now let's finally go in there and just get rid of that hair. I know that the moment I do this, my character is going to come to life. I think her arms are a little thin, so I'm just going to... Uh, you know, using my anatomy knowledge, fix them, make them look like they make sense. Now I also want to just get rid of that final little bit of hair underneath her crown. And I think we will be done with our queen. I'm very excited. Now as I keep hiding my silhouette and my outline, I'm realizing that... I want to add more spikes on her crown. I mean, since we got rid of the hair, why don't we just really keep pushing it as much as we can? You know, let's add more spikes to her crown. Let's make her as evil as possible. So after adding those two little spikes on her crown, I'm looking at the silhouette again, and I think that I am going to add even more crowns and we're going to use this to almost frame the top part of our character we're just going to make these very big long spikes just going around the side of our character and i'm just putting these very big strokes around and, and you know i i really think it's making her come to life she's looking a lot more evil i really didn't think i was able to capture that in the initial drawing um, I kind of lost my silhouette there a bit, or, or I didn't explore it enough, so that's what I'm doing now. I'm really going to keep pushing those shape elements as much as I can. After adding in that last bit of information, I'm quite happy with the silhouette of my queen, and now I'm ready to see all my characters together in a lineup. You can see all of them together now, and they look really cool. Um, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to hide the outline for my three shapes just so you can see all the silhouettes side by side. Notice the very curvy shapes of the dwarf, the straight shapes of the huntsman, and the very angular shapes of my queen right next to my Snow White character as well. You can see how all of them look together. And, you know, they really do evoke a certain kind of feeling when you look at just those shapes. And now I think that we are done with all our character silhouettes. In the image that you see now, I have added a little more value to my characters and just emphasized some of the shapes. But I really hope that you were able to get a better understanding of the fundamentals of character design and how shape language plays a big role in it. For more courses just like this, please do visit tutpad.com. Happy designing!